So, you new to Battlefield 2042 or new to Battlefield in general? Well, this is the video to help you get started and bring you up to speed with all things Battlefield 2042 related. Now, if you played Battlefield before, you'll be familiar with the four class setup. If not, I'm going to quickly run through that now. So, within Battlefield 2042, there's four different class types. You've got Assault, you got Support, you got Engineer, and you got Recon. And I'm just going to quickly run through them all now, but I will be doing full in-depth guides on each one in future videos to come. Starting off, we've got the Assault class, and their role is to attack, flank, and eliminate the enemy. The class equipment is a medic pen, so when you take damage, you can just heal yourself. The weapon proficiency is that you get three extra magazines when equipping assault rifles. Class gadgets are C5 explosive, RBA armor plate, M18 claymores, and you get a smoke launcher. Specialists, there are four of them. First off, you've got Sundance, so you get a smart explosive, which is essentially a grenade that then explodes into four or five sort of smaller grenades. You also get a wingsuit as well, so jump off a high place, you know, whether it be a side of a cliff or a container or something, and you can glide around the map. Next up, we've got Dozer. You get a ballistic shield, which is essentially like the riot shield from COD if you played that before. And, you know, you, take, you don't really take any damage when you got it equipped up front, but obviously you move slowly, and it's hard to, you don't really have a good, like, sort of field of view. But that's the trade off with it. You also take reduced explosive damage. Thirdly, we've got Maki, so you get a grapple hook that allows you to, you know, sort of move around the map faster and get into places that other specialists wouldn't necessarily be able to get into. And you also move faster when aiming down your sight, or when using zip lines, you move faster on those as well. And then finally, we've got Zane, who has the XM370A sort of grenade launcher. It's essentially just like an airburst grenade launcher, you know, that you equip and you get sort of five shots and you can sort of change the range at which th those explosive shells explode at. It's handy for like sort of clearing out corners and stuff like that if you know there's multiple enemies around there. You also recover health after kills. So say you're taking damage, you kill an enemy. When, once that enemy's dead, you sort of get a bit of health, sort of start regening back from that. Next up, we've got the engineer. Your role is to immobilize, fortify and repair. So handily, your class equipment is a repair tool, which you can use to repair teammate gadgets and also teammate vehicles. Your weapon proficiency is improved accuracy with LMGs when crouched or prone. And your class gadgets are AT mines, C5 explosives, an EOD bot, the FXM33 anti-air launcher, the Javelin, and the M5 recoilless. Within here, you've got three specialists. So you've got Boris, who has a sentry gun, which is sort of an automated sentry turret that you put down. And when you're next to sentry guns, uh, they become more effective. So if you're sort of around multiple of them, they can become really effective on the battlefield. Second specialist is Liz, and you get the G84TGM launcher, which is basically a player-controlled anti-vehicle missile. And you can reveal nearby vehicles when damaged or hacked when the G84TGM is equipped. And then finally, we've got Crawford, who uses a mounted Vulcan, which is basically a mounted minigun. And you can repair heavily damaged vehicles at an increased speed. And you can always repair deployed gadgets faster. Enemy. Thirdly, we've got the support class. And your role is to reinforce, supply, and revive. So handily, your class equipment is the defibrillator. Your weapon proficiency is that you get a faster draw time with SMGs. And your class gadgets are ammo crate, health crate, M18 claymore, and a smoke launcher. And once again, you've got three specialists. So starting off, we've got Irish, who can deploy cover or a trophy system that blocks incoming explosives. You can also repl replenish gadget ammo for friends that you revive. Second, we've got Falk, who has the S21 Surrette pistol, which essentially allows you to shoot a dart at teammates at a distance to heal them, or you can shoot it on the ground for it to be picked up later and heal teammates. You get an increased health charge rate when using defibs or interact revive. And then finally we've got Angel who has a loadout crate which can deliver am ammunition and a crate that can also allow sort of loadout changes on the go. So say multiple enemy vehicles turn up, just deploy this and it'll allow both yourself and teammates and squad mates to change their classes to be able to equip launchers and whatnot to take down those vehicles. You can also re revive any ally and the person that you revive gains ammo from that. And finally, we've got the recon class. Your role is to scout, disrupt and infiltrate. So to do this, you've got the class equipment, which is the insertion beacon, 
which is essentially just a little beacon that you can put down on the map that allows your squad mates to spawn on it. So it's handy if you want to get behind enemy lines and cause chaos behind them, or put it down to like a capture point that you like you're constantly having to attack, just to allow you to spawn that bit closer. It's also handy for defending as well. So you've got a weapon proficiency, which is immediate and constant steady scope with sniper rifles. So you haven't got to hold your breath or anything like that. You get that nice, clean, you know, steady scope that allows you to take those long range shots. You've got class gadgets, which is C5 explosive, M18 claymore, proximity grenade, Soflam, tracer dart, and tugs. And then within this class, you've got four specialists. So you've got Casper, who has a recon drone that allows you to spot and disrupt enemies. And you have a movement sensor as well that sort of alerted by nearby threats so if there's enemies nearby you get a little highlight coming up saying that there's enemies nearby secondly we've got Rao who has a cyber warfare suit which is basically just allows you to temporarily disable enemy vehicle systems so like flares and stuff like that and disorients enemy soldiers so it sort of makes their screen kind of all fuzzy and they can't don't have like a proper map reading or anything like that and then damage enemies become spotted next up we've got Paik with an EMG X scanner so temporarily highlight enemies However, your position is also revealed, but it is handy to sort of highlight enemies through walls and stuff like that. But there is that trade-off of being revealed, uh, your position being revealed. And then damage enemies become spotted for both yourself and the team. And then finally we've got Camilla Blasco, who has an X6 infiltration device. So it creates a zone which jams spotting info and incoming lock-ons. And you also don't trigger motion-based gadgets or be targeted by Boris's sentry gun which can be handy in some certain situations, especially in those close quarter situations where there's many of Boris guns everywhere around. So you, you heard me talking about weapon proficiencies and I just want to highlight what they are. So, you know, like I said, each class has their sort of, I guess, designated or weapon that they're sort of best used alongside with. So, you know, you got the recon, which is best used with sniper rifles, the support, which is best used with SMGs and so on. But this doesn't limit you to just those weapons, you know, a recon class can equip an assault rifle, an LMG, SMG, you know, anything like that. However, if they use a sniper rifle, that's the sort of best weapon for that class. However, it's not always the best weapon for, you know, that certain situation, you know. If you're in a close quarters area, you know, you might want to have an SMG equipped, you know. On certain maps, there are capture points that sort of are within side really confined areas that might be better suited for using different SMGs or assault rifles. So, you know, you still have that flexibility, but there are certain weapons that are better suited to each class. If you found this video useful so far, then please drop a like and subscribe, as it really help us out, as currently we're going after 1,000 subscribers by July 31st. Now, I just want to cover a new feature that's in Battlefield 2042, and that's like the weapon attachment systems that you can do, sort of change your weapon on the go in-game, and how you go about equipping the different attachments, sort of, in the lobby before getting into the actual game. So simply, you can go to other classes and then select the primary weapon. Obviously here as well, you can select the different uh, specialists for each class. But I like to just go to collection just because it's, I don't know, it's just easier. So, you know, say we want to customize, I don't know, the PBX that you get sort of as a starting default weapon when you first start the game. Simply press whatever button it tells you. So for me, it's left click on the mouse, customize. And you get this screen where you can see all your sights, your magazines, your underbarrel attachments, so like lasers and foregrips, and then this is your barrel attachment, so suppressors, long, short barrels, muzzle breakers, and all that stuff. Now, if you want to just add to these, you get three um, for each like sort of section, I guess, of the gun. You get three different choices that you can put on there. Obviously, each one you have to un unlock, so you do get some by default. Normally, you know, it's just a default sight like this, it's the iron sights. Some weapons do come with, like, say, a barrel already attached, but then you can't add any other barrels to that just because that's how the gun is. But as you can see here, like, you can lock different sights for the gun, ranging from red dot sights to ACOG sights and everything in between. But you can see it does require kills, so this Ghost Hybrid 1.5 to 4 times X sight is 210 kills. Now, you can do this in a multiplayer game, but you can also do it on an offline co-op session with bots, which I'll show you how to set up in a second. So, that's how you change all of these, and in a minute I'll show you how to change it in-game as well, because it, it is a bit, not awkward, but if you don't know, then you know it can be sort of a, a bit confusing how to do it. But to unlock the uh, attachments is the easiest way I find it, because like as you can see, this weapon here, the BSVM, 
its default mag is this one here, which is only 10 bullets. Now, it's a single fire and fully auto, but with it being only 10 bullets, you can usually only kill like one to two players, like three if you're lucky. And in a game like this, where like this gun, um, the K30, this one here, or like pretty much any gun has like massive magazines, you know, or sort of bigger starting magazines, you can be at a disadvantage, especially when you come across like multiple enemies at once. You know, you can find yourself running out of bullets and having to reload and stuff like that. So what I like to do is to go back to the sort of main screen where you can select the different game modes. And you can either do this in Conquest or Breakthrough. I prefer Breakthrough because it's a more sort of sectioned off part of the map. Like each uh, area of the map players get funneled into it. And I simply go to Breakthrough and then you go to Breakthrough Solo Slash Co-op. Now, I like to do either Kaleidoscope or Stranded as I find these two maps are sort of more, you know, infantry focused, you know, more so Stranded. And you can get quite a lot of kills since like i said everybody's getting funneled into the same area i haven't tried it on spearhead but that's another kind of linear map as well but i find these two work best for me and now what, what you do you know make sure the settings on beginner just to make the bots easier and then you click kaleidoscope or whatever map you choose really it works on any map and you simply click that click done and then click play and then you load in with the weapon you want and then you just go to town on the bots and it's just an easier way to sort of unlock some of the better attachments because like some of the starting scopes as well that you unlock are just really trash for the weapon. Like some of them are like ACOG sites for like SMGs and stuff like that. Like stuff that just doesn't really function well on that weapon. So it's just a nice way to get a few good attachments to at least make it a bit more viable in multiplayer. Now that you've got the attachments that you want to use on the battlefield, I'm just going to quickly show you how to swap between them. Now... I'm not too sure what the default keybind is because I've changed it on PC. But if you could once again go to weapons and equipment and look for modify weapon attachments, I believe. You'll see whatever the default keybind is and also what the console button is. But essentially, you press that button when, as you're playing as an infantry soldier. And you get this screen. And you're able to switch between the different attachments that you've selected back either on the deploy screen or on the main menu. And you can simply just switch between them and on the go. And it changes how your gun, you know, works and how it sort of functions on the battlefield. As you can see, you know, you can see all the different stats on the side in game. So you kind of get a good idea of what's happening if, if you're still sort of figuring out each attachment. Next up, I just want to cover vehicles really quickly. Now, I'm not going to break down each vehicle or anything like that. You know, that's going to be a separate video in the future. But I do want to cover it for this video. So as you can see here, there's sort of three categories. So you've got personal, US, and Russia. Both the US and Russia teams can use the personal vehicles. However, you know, unless you somehow commandeer one from the enemy, you can only use your faction-specific vehicles sort of out of the spawn. In the personal vehicle section, you can see there's several different types. And, you know, some of these are unlocked by just playing the game and leveling up in general. So... This one here, the LAT4 Recon, that's just unlocked straight away. The Hovercraft here is un unlocked at level 6. The EBA Wildcat is level 10. Nightbird level 20. MAV level 34. And the MC Balti is level 50. Just in case you're wondering why you haven't got these unlocked or you can't equip them and use them, that's the reason and why. And... You know, as I was going through these, you probably saw, like, there's sort of different attributes to each vehicle. So, like, this recon is squad-friendly, mobile, it's transport, and it's a scout. So, you know, that, and then, and then when you look at, like, the MAV, you know, it's armoured, transport, amphibious, squad-friendly. So, each vehicle has different roles on the battlefield that it can perform well, and other vehicles can then compensate for their, for that role. So, you know, this recon here, it's fast, it's nimble, you know, it can get around the battlefield really quickly. But it's lightly armoured, so you know, as you can see here, there's no armour, so even small like arms fire from like just your submachine guns, LMGs, or any sort of weapon like that can take the driver out. And you know, it can't take many shots from like explosives, so whether it be rockets or even C5 or anything like that, it takes out really quickly. Whereas say the MAV or you know your M1A5 or the T28, you know, it can take a lot of damage and take a lot of rockets. So, you know, depending on what you want to play and kind of what role you want to play in the battlefield, you know, choose your choose your vehicles wisely. You know, sometimes different you want you need to be more nimble so you can rush behind enemy lines and get your squad spawning behind the enemy and so sort of cause chaos behind there. 
but sometimes you might just need a heavy tank just to you know be able to pin down other enemy vehicles and keep them off your team uh sorry off your team infantry so that way then you know your infantry can push up so you know there's a lot of decisions to be made but as you can see also you know you can sort of get a rough idea of what each one does from like the different attributes it has and different stats sorry on the right hand side you know different firepower and stuff like that so you can pick and choose and compare and see you know what works best for you there are several ways that you can spawn vehicles on the battlefield the first one is from the deploy screen so you get this screen when you first either load into a game or when you're killed on the battlefield you come back to this screen and then you can select where you want to spawn again now as you can see i'm on the us side which means i can select either one of these two spawn points back in the home base but below this one point here as you can see there's sort of like a cog icon it looks like a bit like the settings icon and it says vehicles next to it i can click this and it brings up this screen where i can select any type of vehicle now if it's grayed out that means that i'm not able to select the, that vehicle currently because it's already in use on the battlefield however if it's not grayed out like these ones here it lets me select it and you know each sort of set of vehicles so like light armor heavy armor is in its own bracket so you can see here we can have light transport armored light heavy air attack fighter all of those can be in play at once on the battlefield but only the amount that's allowed so light transport we can have two of those on the battlefield at one time whereas you know armored transport we can only have one at a time so that's one way you can spawn in vehicles the next way to spawn vehicles in battlefield 2042 is actually playing as an infantry soldier so you get something called a call-in tablet now on pc it's the letter b i believe by default and on console i'm not too sure but if you go under uh, movement and equipment and the settings it should tell you just look for the setting called call in tablet and it will tell you what the uh, button is to be able to call that in but essentially you just press whatever keybind or button it's assigned to and you get this tablet screen now as you can see here i can call in any type of vehicle you also get the ranger which is a personal drone that follows you around that you know is ai controlled you can't control it at all but we'll talk about that in the future but as you can see here once again is all the different types of vehicles and simply select which one you want to spawn in and you'll get this sort of blue circle and it says assign drop point you just click the button that's assigned to and, and it'll go green just stand back because you can die from this you can get crushed by it but as you can see here it gets parachuted in and then simply just go up get in and you can drive around and yeah go to town so it's really handy this is for like you know if you're sort of caught out in the open and you need a vehicle or you see an enemy vehicle uh, or armored vehicle coming towards you and you need some armor of your own instead of getting killed by it and then going back to deploy and having to drive all the way back over if it's available you can call it in via the tablet just quickly i want to cover some of the recommended settings i like suggest you have a sort of play around with or change to see if it works for you I'm not going to cover all of the settings because we'll be here all day otherwise. But starting off, we've got the crosshair. So crosshair color is something I'd suggest you have a play around with. I think the default is white. And I have found that having a white crosshair, you can sometimes lose it like in sort of snowy maps or just when looking towards like the sun rays or the sun in general or just certain situations, I can find myself losing the crosshair. So I recommend sort of picking a unique color that you wouldn't find in battlefield 2042 or you wouldn't see it the majority of the time so as you can see i've gone with pink but i know others have gone with like a sort of dark uh, not dark blue so a lighter blue color you know and other colors that are not commonly found in battlefield 2042 so just have a play around with that and then see see what you think you know next up we've got uh, hood icons so i've made my enemy icon scale bigger because obviously in this game there's not really there are factions but it's not like previous battlefield games where each faction's got like a unique sort of look to them everybody kind of looks the same unless they've got like different skins equipped but even then the only difference you you know is if there's like a is there a little green light or green out um light on the or green or red light sorry so like green light obviously means teammate red light on it means an enemy player but in the chaos of battle, it can be hard to tell um, what's what. You know, sometimes if you just run upon a group of players, you know, it can be sort of difficult to tell who's who sometimes. Just in that split second where milliseconds matter between life or death. So I've just made the enemy icon scale bigger just to help, help me out there with spying. Because I do find myself still shooting teammates from time to time. 
and then finally un under hood I've changed my uh, show kills made by so I think the defaults normally all but I've got mine set to squad and nearby since these maps are massive you know and there's like sometimes like 128 players on a map so 64 v 64 a lot can be going on around you you know and you don't really need to know what's going on all the way on the other side of the map you know because it doesn't really affect you in that regard so I've got it set to squad and nearby so it'll only be updated when either a squad mate is killed or kills an enemy or somebody nearby gets killed or is, or kills an enemy so that way then I kind of know at least something like I've got some information that's more relevant to where I am on the battlefield you know if I see sort of the kill feed light up I'm like okay something's going down what do I need to be aware of you know who's who's killing who what's what they're getting killed by and it just helps you be that more better equipped on the battlefield to kind of know how to go about different situations since you've got more information to act on moving on I just want to give you all some tips that I found useful in my time playing Battlefield 2042. I'm not going to go in depth with them, but I will be doing sort of specific videos on some of these tips in the future. Now, you will die a lot when playing this game. Like, you know, there's many ways in Battlefield 2042 that you can die from just getting shot in the back, shot in the side, shot from the air, you know, getting sniped across the map. There's plenty of times where you, you get shot and you don't have a clue where from. But there are ways to help this. Now, what I tend to do is go from cover to cover. You know, sometimes on some of the mats, it can be difficult. But, you know, just try and look for cover and just move from cover to cover. That way then, you won't always find yourself out in the open with no cover. This is easier said than done on some of the maps, I know. But when, when you can, just try and get yourself in some cover and then be able to sort of move on to that next bit of cover. And I find that helps a lot. I also find sort of looking at the map, sort of where my teammates and squad mates uh, are, because not only does this give you critical information of where the enemy could potentially flank you from, when either of these um, people die, so teammates or squad mates, it gets marked on the map, so that way then you know that there's at least some enemy action going on that side or like over that part of the map. So if you're in that area or nearby and you see, you know, that um, mark showing that your teammates or squad mates are dead, then you know potentially there could be enemies coming towards you use the map and see you know where the enemy where your teammates are sorry like i just said because if there's like an open part of the map where there's little to no teammates then this is a potential area where the enemy could flank you from and either come from the side and shoot you in the side or come all the way behind and shoot you in the back or potentially go behind you not even shoot you and then start back capping which then will allow more enemies to spawn behind you in certain modes like conquest Always check for marked enemies. Marked enemies are highlighted both on your screen, so not even looking at the map, just in general, they get a sort of red icon above them with their name below. But they also get highlighted on the map as well. So always be checking the mini map in the corner, but also you can open up the big expanded map as well and get a better overview of the full battlefield. And marked enemies also appear on there, so you can sort of get an idea of just like a big um, sort of lump of enemies or a big group of enemies, sorry all marked in one area then you know that potentially that could be an area where all the enemies are going towards a certain objective and you might need to get over there and support your team or there might be a flank going on now this is a big one and sometimes i find it's hit or miss but footsteps you know sometimes enemies sound like they're massive like, sorry, wearing massive boots and just stomping around and other times i find that the footsteps get lost like there's not really a footstep sound but when you can like headphones really help with sort of you know, highlighting these footstep sounds and just makes it easier to sort of get that directional cue on where enemies could be coming from. You know, if they're above you, below you, to the left of you, to the right of you. There are instances where there can be like a wall in between you and an enemy and you can just hear them stomping on the other side next to you and that way then you either get the drop on them. This is a big one and I still make this mistake now, but your teammates will never cover you. The amount of times I'm like, oh, that guy over there has got that, that sort of side or, you know, he's got that bit of the building covered. And then he either dies or he just runs off and I get shot in the back. Or he sees me shooting and comes over to see, you know, what I'm shooting at. And then we get shot in the back. Just always know that you're, unless you're talking to him, like in Discord or, or a voice chat or something like that, your teammate will never cover you. So don't always rely on them. You know, the only way to know, you know, to cover you is to cover yourself, basically. And then stick with your squad. You know, I found that... In Battlefield 2042, compared to past Battlefield games, there isn't really a squad incentive currently, and I hope this changes, but 
where you can just try and stick in and around your team or squad. Now, do be aware that there are instances where, like, the people will just run to this, like, I call it the meat grinder, where basically both teams come up against each other in, like, a narrow area, and everybody just keeps running into it, and nobody really decides to flank or sort of fall back and sort of flank around. So if you see this happening, and you just see people constantly running in, getting one kill or and then or two kills and then dying or you're just getting shot from everywhere and ex explosives are going off around you that's when i wouldn't suggest following your squad and maybe just potentially falling back and then like looking for a flank route either to like go behind and cap objectives or come in from the side and try and relieve that pressure but most of the time you know when you're starting off just sticking in and around your squad or teammates you won't sort of get into those situations where you're coming against like enemies by yourself like where it's like you by yourself and there's like a group of 10 enemies you know, and you're just constantly getting mowed down. So sticking in and around your squad, and I find that does help sort of alleviate that time of just constantly dying. Another great perk about the system in Battlefield is each magazine is separate to the last. So say you run out of ammo in, say, the standard issue extended mag magazine. Basically, I can just swap to, and I'm not able to get ammo. If I swap to the standard issue, it's a different group set of bullets if you know what i mean so like it has a different ammo capacity like each ammo capacity for each mag is different so i don't know how that would work in real life i'm guessing it'd be quite heavy but it works in this game and so it's just handy if you're not able to give yourself ammo or you're not able to get ammo then you can just swap in between of these obviously each mag has different um unique traits that make it viable in different situations but if you're sort of caught out and you need some ammo it's just a nice thing to be able to swap to a different mag and you still have ammo to be able to at least be somewhat competitive on the battlefield. If you want to die less and get kills in Battlefield 2042, then check out this video that's on screen now as I'll be covering some of the tips that allow me to do just that. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps us out as currently we're going after 1,000 subscribers by July 31st. And yeah, until the next one, have a good one.